Judging just wrapped up in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada at the Vancouver Pro. And Hastan Mustafa fans who've had a rough few weeks. You guys are probably feeling really good right now. He is clearly in the lead. Uh, first, uh, I want to say that the graphic that I had prepared a couple days ago, I didn't know who was going to be second or third or anything like that. I just had a, some some graphics made up by uh, by our guy, Alan. So when I say dominating, it's no disrespect to second place, who right now looks like it's Stan Lungu, a.k.a. Stanimal. Stanimal is probably the runner-up. No, he's definitely the runner-up. Stan Lungu, the runner-up. But Hassan Mustafa, looking phenomenal, coming off two second places this season. A few weeks ago at the Toronto Pro to Ian Valier. Then again to Phil Clayhar in Orlando. Uh, more recently, uh, it was looking rough. And Hassan even went on his social media and said, this is it, Vancouver's my last show, win or lose. And I think by that he meant if he wins it, which it looks like he's going to, he'll, he'll do the Olympia. I, I don't think he meant that this would be it, because obviously if he wins, qualifies for the Olympia, he's going to go to the Mr. Olympia. He missed it last year. You don't want to miss Mr. Olympia contest as a pro bodybuilder, because you never know how many times you're going to get there, if you're going to get there at all. So that is your top two. Um, if you want to see some really good pictures on your phone, go to Bodybuilders Without Borders on Instagram. A guy named Daniel runs that great, great Instagram page. And he has 10, 10 comparison shots of Hassan versus Stan. Um, uh, if you also go to Hassan Mustafa's page, he has some video of the first call out. So he's in the middle with Stan. Uh, on one side of them is Prince Bobang, is that his name? Former, former 212 athlete. And on the other side is Nate Spear from New Hampshire. Nate looking, we call him Nasty Nate. He comes in, always comes in tremendous condition. Uh, I, I had a feeling he was going to be a, a real factor in this. Now, there's only six guys in the show. So the only two, uh, the only two I didn't mention were uh, Morgan McDonald, who I'm not very familiar with. And a guy named Aaron, 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 Aaron Gowley, Gowley. I've seen him before. Massive guy, six foot one, 340 in the offseason. Kind of reminds me of Ian Valier. I mean, they look like they could be cousins or something. They're probably related way back. But uh, Hassan definitely tighter than he was in Orlando. Uh, Chad probably figuring it out. You know, switching coaches like, uh, like Hassan has done now. This is his third coach in three years. Uh, he had Chris Aceto. Then he went to uh, AJ Sims Cement Factory, who he won two shows with AJ last year. Not really sure why he moved on. He won the Orlando Pro and the Puerto Rico Pro last year. Uh, then he went to Chad Nichols. Chad, obviously, big Rami's coach. He was Ronnie Coleman's coach. His wife, Kim Chazewski, won four Olympias with him, uh, from his Olympias. So Chad's a great coach, but any coach needs typically a couple shows to figure out a client's body and how to peak them right, how they react to different variables with the, the depletion, the loading, the sodium, who knows, diuretics, whatever. It takes time to really figure out uh, their bodies. And I think Chad's Chad's on it. But Hassan Mustafa, you know, his fans, I, I would, I felt bad for his fans because it was to see your guy come that close. He was winning in Orlando. Was that last week in Orlando? He was winning straight first places after the judging in Orlando. And a few hours later at the finals in the confirmation round, Phil Clayhar got fuller and tighter, pulled ahead of him, beat him, which I've never seen the confirmation round make that big a difference like it did in that particular show. But, man, all right, let's, let's see. Some of you guys probably were watching it, and uh, maybe some of you guys are commenting were, were actually there. I don't know. Tell me. Tell me what you saw, guys. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. That's why we go live, guys. So, Tony Ruggiero, how come with everybody being approached these days? Nobody seems to compete. Yeah, six guys in a pro show. That that's not very good. That that's a uh, that's a really low turnout. It's an Olympia qual. They're all Olympia qualifiers. Every pro show is a chance to qualify for the Olympia. So I don't know why a couple guys who are looking really good, like Justin Shear is doing Chicago. He looks phenomenal. He could have jumped in there, and who knows? Maybe he would have won. I don't know. Hassan looked great though. I'm not I'm not saying he would have beat Hassan. Um, Mo Shaban, another Egyptian living in Los Angeles. I thought Mo was going to jump in. I thought he said something. I thought he said like, uh, he did like a hashtag like Vancouver Pro. I, I thought on his recent Instagram post, he made an allusion to the fact that he was going to jump in at Vancouver. And he's someone who could have really pushed Hassan and maybe beat him. Hassan, because uh, 
Mohammed Shaban at his best is very, very good. Uh, so let's see. Rich B. Hassan easily winning. Hopefully his health holds up so we can go to the Olympia. Yeah. I mean, he's... I remember one show he had like... Uh, was it in Tampa? I think it was a couple of years ago. He had to go to the hospital the day after the show because it was like... I think it was like a hemorrhoid or something that, that it, it was really painful. I felt bad for the guy because come on, most of you guys have probably had a hemorrhoid in your life and it's, it's no fun. I think that's what he had. It, it was something like that and it's, it was poor guy. But he, he made it through the show in excruciating pain. You know, he told, told me later he was in horrible pain the whole time, but he made it through it. I think he was like third or fourth that year. Uh, let's see, what's up, Doc? <laughs> Looney Tunes fan, well, you would say that. Justin Bass, sadly, Hassan will be the bodybuilder with the biggest potential to fail. Well, He's on track to win this. Now, we don't know until tomorrow night, but uh, Stan looks very good. Don't get me wrong. Stan Stanimal looks phenomenal. Best I've ever seen him. Uh, Hassan just is so big and round and full, and he's in condition. You know, Stan probably has a better structure, just like Phil did. Wider clavicles, smaller waist, more of a taper. You know, he turned pro in, in men's physique. You don't, you don't become a men's physique pro without an awesome V taper. But Hassan just, it's just, it's too much to handle, I think. Uh, Mo should have jumped in. I totally agree. If I'm someone of that caliber, like Mo's been the Olympia, he's won some pro shows. He's one guy who is capable of beating Hassan. He should have jumped in. I don't know why he didn't. Maybe he had just had other plans. Darren Rainey, thanks for this run. Attending finals tomorrow. Yeah, fine. it's it's a weird show. The uh, they just wrapped up judging, so they're three hours behind us, behind me. I'm in Boston. It's two ten p.m. over in Vancouver, so. Uh, yeah, they started their judging at, uh, 1 p.m. their time, which would be, was four here, and they just wrapped up. I think they were doing, like, three or four divisions. Anyway, uh, thanks for that. Tony Ruggiero, kind of like Ron used to say, everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, nobody wants to lift any heavy-ass weight. Everybody wants a pro car, but nobody actually wants to compete. Yeah, I mean, if everyone who had a pro card competed even once a year, I'm talking all the divisions, every pro show would be stacked. Huge lineups because there's thousands. There are thousands of pros now. Even in open, I, I don't think open bodybuilding has anywhere near the amount of pros as a lot of these other divisions because there are less opportunities still for open bodybuilders to turn pro than there are other divisions. Like just, a, just as a random example, in a lot of the shows in the U.S., in every national show, even like the Junior USA and Junior Nationals, which, you know, bodybuilders, bodybuilders can't turn pro at those shows. There's no pro card for bodybuilders, but... Like the top two in every division of everything else turns pro. Uh, I think even classic. So you got like men's physique, women's physique, figure, fitness, they're all. So they're cranking out the pros. So let's see, Justin Bass, by the way, you're the best run. God bless. Thank you very much, Justin. Arlette Fitto 50. I'd be shocked if a son loses. This isn't a tough lineup. Yeah, you know, I, I say this and... I'm not a Hassan hater, so if, if I joke, if I make a joke about it or something, don't, please don't construe it as that I, I'm a Hassan hater. I, I have a, nothing but respect and admiration for him. He's a family man. I've, I've met him. I've interviewed him with his wife and his, his little baby daughter. Wonderful guy, soft-spoken, uh, humble, hardworking family man. I respect the hell out of him. You know, because someone said, uh, you know, you wanted Ian to win. It was all politics. I, I had no horse in the race in Toronto. I didn't, I don't care if, Ian won or Hassan won, I would have been happy for either one of them. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm Ian's best friend or anything. <laughs> you know, I, I like him a lot, but I'm not biased towards him. Um, yeah, but I was saying, as a joke, I was saying, if Hassan can't win this, then it's not looking good for Hassan's career. Because this is a guy that should be, I'm not going to say top five or top six of the Olympia. That's a very, very small group of people. That's your... You know, that's your Nick Walker, uh, your your Hottie, your uh, <laughs> your Derek Lunsford. It's a very, very elite group. But top 10, not out of the question. Hassan at his best can be top 10 at the Olympia. Why not? Um, but he's not going to get there unless he wins the show. And if he couldn't, in three shows, if he couldn't win, if he couldn't win this one with only five other guys, he only had to beat five guys. And realistically, none of them are Olymp have been to the Olympia or or won a pro show, none of these guys, as far as I know. I, mean, I don't know if Prince Bobang won anything as a 212. He was third at the Toronto, at uh, the Vancouver, and uh, he was, no, he was third at Tor Toronto in 20, I'm sorry, 2019 Toronto, and then Vancouver 2019, 
fourth, but he was a 212. This is the first time in the open. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Justin Bass, Hassan just looks like he has no energy. I think he needs to first strengthen his mind before his body conditioning. I, I heard a lot of that feedback that in Orlando, it didn't look like, he, the, I heard words like lazy or uh, just blase, like he didn't care. I just don't think he's he's an aggressive guy. Like, you know, some of these guys, they get up there and like, mm, mm, you know, they, they got that fire in their eyes and you can tell they really want it. I think Hassan's just more of a mellow laid back guy. He's not, I don't think that's his personality. doesn't mean he's not there to win. He's obviously trains his ass off, diets his ass off. He's putting everything into these shows as far as I know. But yeah, he doesn't have that that aggression on stage that you see some of these guys where they're, they, they, you could see that they own that stage and they're not going to accept any, anything less than a win. It's, it's, it's a foregone conclusion in their mind. And I don't know. I, I haven't really talked to Son about it. I haven't interviewed him in a long time. I really need to get with him and, and do another interview. His wife, uh, what's her name? Rima? Raymond? His wife translates. She's a great translator. She's from Canada, but she speaks perfect, uh, perfect Arabic. Uh, let's see. Message retracted. How is the Linda Murray Pro Show going? Uh, I haven't been paying too much attention. Um, I'm assuming John Jewett, you know, that doesn't have open men. It's 212. I'm really rooting for my buddy Nate Tello, owner of Jim Hub Boston, client of Jose Raymond. Great guy. Great guitarist, too. Uh, 42 years old. I'm really rooting for him. But it looks like it's, you know, when I was just looking at the lineup, the, the list, I saw it. And then I looked at his updates, and it was John Jewett. I'm like, yeah. John Jewett's, what was he, like sixth at the Olympia? No, no, I think he was like fourth at the Olympia, right? Yeah, I mean, John Jewett's no joke. He's very, very good. He won Chicago Pro a couple years back. He's won a couple shows. He's very good. Uh, Tony Ruggiero, I wish Hassan would get with opposing coach. Some of his shots, oh, opposing coach. You did the talk. Talk to text screws you over, doesn't it? It does, does that to me all the time. Some of his shots, he really doesn't hit correctly to maximize physique, but that one arm on hit most muscular is wacky. He blew, in a, blew Ian away in that shot. Yeah, you know, any of his most muscular shots, when someone's that thick and round, his crab is awesome, his hands on his two hands on hip, his one hand on hip, killer, killer shots. His side shots are awesome. I, you know, we were talking about this. We did a, a preview, Giles, Giles Thomas and I, we did a preview on this channel that posted yesterday. And we talked about, uh, Giles had noticed that his, his posing is getting a little better. He's crunching down on his abs now in the frontal bicep, which was his two worst shots were the frontal bicep, which is the first pose they call, and the front lat spread, mainly because of his structure, because he doesn't have super wide clavicles and a narrow waist. He doesn't have a natural V-taper structure. So those are the shots that if you don't have a really good V-taper, those are the shots where you notice it the most those straight on shots, the front relax and the judging, the court turns, the front double and the front lat. That's where you can really see if someone has more of a square, straight up and down torso versus uh, a tapered torso. Yeah, and Hassan, you know, there's only so much you can do with posing, but you know, he could do like twisting and there are things, I, you know, I don't know too many posing coaches. The, the one that most people go to out of Connecticut is Kenny Wallach. He's worked with everybody, he's amazing. If Hassan, linked up with him, I'm sure he could could improve some of his poses. Uh, M12, I think Hassan is a clear winner. Yeah, DJ Leader, happy Saturday run, thank you. Uh, did you get my message on hip and shoulder replacement? Uh, where'd you send that? I don't know. I don't know where you put that message. No, I didn't I didn't see anything like that, no. I, I, my hip's fine, I do need a shoulder, new shoulder though. Uh, get the likes up, folks, thank you. Uh, so Justin Bass, who do you think has a better chance of improving, Hassan or Rami? Improving, when you say improving, you know, I don't, I don't think either one of them is going to really change their physique drastically at all moving forward. They're already maxed out. Rami doesn't need to get any bigger. Uh, I don't see any body parts that he's going to really bring up. He's had years and years. People talk about his calves and upper chest and, you know, his weak points have gotten a little better, but in Hassan, it's mainly a structural issue. So, I don't see either one of them really improving in terms of size or shape or structure or anything like that. You can always get better condition. But out of the two guys, Hassan's, Hassan's a little younger. He's a few years younger. Uh, Rami's like 38 now. I think Hassan's only 32. Is that right? 19, born in 92. Or is he 31? 
He's 31. He's a young guy. So I guess I'd say Hassan, just because he's got a little more time on his side. But, you know, Sean Turner, Leia, Ahmad, Helmi, Riam. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Um, uh, that's Hassan's wife, Riam. Riam. I think I've spelled it wrong before, too, in the magazine. Ugh. But, yeah, wonderful, wonderful family. Uh, cute little daughter. They bring her everywhere. Uh, you know, I, I have kids. They're, they're adults now, but obviously I have a little extra respect for parents because it's it's a lot of work. <laughs> M12, do you think Hassan leaving his previous coach, AJ, was a mistake? I mean, his last year package was much better than this year. I, I never heard why he left AJ. I mean, you win, you hire a coach, you've never won a pro show. This guy gets you in the shape of your life and you win two pro shows back to back. That's what Hassan did last year. And I don't know why he would have left unless AJ decided he didn't want to work. I don't know the case. If anybody knows what the what the circumstances were, I'm curious. Why would you leave a coach that you had just taken you to two wins shortly after beginning to work with you? That was their only year working together, as far as I know. Oh, thank you, uh, Rihanna. DJ Leader. Uh, you can reach me on my Instagram, DJ. It's Ron Harris Muscle. You can send me a message. Thank you. Uh, ding tweet, ding tweet. I'd love to see Ozzy, Josh Leonardo, which win the Masters, then go to the Open. What a comeback story that would be. Yeah, because whoever wins the Masters, I, I didn't realize this until Giles found out. Masters Olympia is a qualifier for the Mister, so whoever wins the Masters gets to go to the Olympia. It's a qualifier. So, yeah, Josh Leonardo, it's, he's been to the Olympia before, um, but Josh hasn't competed in a few years. I, I mean, the favorite now has to be Phil Clare. I mean, Kamal Elgarni's no joke either. But Phil, Phil looked damn good in Orlando. Uh, I don't know who's beaten Phil Clayhart at the Masters Olympia. The way he looked last last week. Was it two weeks ago? Last week. Uh, let's see. DJ Leader, I'll comment on your power with Giles when you're talking about a competitor hip replacement, your consumer shoulder replacement. I'm getting one soon. Yeah, I mean, I'm waiting for the technology to improve on shoulder replacements because I haven't talked to anybody that's really happy with it. You know, I, when I went for my consultation... With a surgeon, I was approved for the surgery five, six years ago. I never got it, and I remember asking the surgeon. This is a guy who's worked on you know pro athletes like New England Patriots, Boston Red Sox. I said, "Would I get my strength back? Because I mean, that's I can deal with pain. It's not like excruciating. It hurts. It hurts, and it hurts a lot more like the day or two after I train chest and shoulders. But it's not like I, I can deal with it." But I wanted to know, could I get back to like full function? He's like, no, you, you do that, you're going you're gonna to wear out the implant and then we're going to have to go in there in like a few more years and dig it out and put another one in. He goes, trust me, you don't want that. It's way harder. It's a lot more complicated procedure to remove an implant and put another one in than it is to put one in the first time. So, yeah, enough about that. Uh, how is Hassan looking compared to the last two shows? Tighter. Again, go to their, their 10 great comparison shots on the Instagram page, Bodybuilders Without Borders, there's no spaces, Bodybuilders Without Borders, a guy named Daniel runs it, does a fantastic job covering the sport. Uh, I think he calls himself the ESPN of bodybuilding because, yeah, he covers all the shows. Great coverage with uh, a lot of photos, videos on Instagram. And there was 10 shots in a row of, you know, the final comparison, which was, this is typically what they do when it's the top two. There'll be a first call out with, like, the top four or five guys, and there's only six guys in the show. So I think they just had everybody on stage. A lot of times a call-out is six guys, and they only had six guys, so not a big deal. But the last call-out is typically your top two. It's, it's mo almost every show. Eh, a lot of shows. And it was Stan Lilungu, Stan Amo, and Hassan. So there's 10, 10 shots. There's every pose. You know, front double, front lat, side chest, side tricep, abdominal and thigh, most muscular. So you get to rear double, bicep, rear lat spread. You get to see every every shot between the two. And it looks to me, just based on Hassan just having this overwhelming size, you know, and the condition is really dialed in. He's looking good. I mean, he's looking worthy of a win. And like I said, if he can't win this, he only had to beat five guys. And, you know, there's no one in there that's like a big name that's like been, been on the Mr. Olympia stage. So, Hassan, I really hope he pulls. He it, it, it would have to really mess up between now and tomorrow night to, to lose this. 
Dane, I think Cement Factory is not working with open guys anymore. Mm. Yeah, that was, there's been a few coaches. I think George Farah did the same thing that after so many of those deaths in the sport um, over the past, you know, since the pandemic, you can draw your own conclusions from that. Um, a lot, of, there are some coaches that decided I'm not going to work with open bodybuilders anymore. I'll work with classic. I'll work with like women, but I'm not working with open men because open men are the biggest, heaviest. They use the most gear out of, of the divisions. They're, every division uses gear and, and PEDs. Uh, that's, that's not even up for debate. But if you're 270 on stage, you're probably using a lot more than somebody who's 180 on stage or something like that. You know, that's a, that's a very big generalization, but it does, these open guys tend to have more health problems because they have to push the envelope with more food, heavier training, just carrying all that mass is a strain on the organs and everything, the heart, just being that big and heavy, even though they're not obese, it's not fat, it's still weight that the body has to carry around and pump blood through all those muscles and it's extra work, it's extra wear and tear. Like a car that's like driven all day, every day, like a rental car or something, or a delivery car. M12, rumor said Hassan left AJ because of his health issue before the Olympia. Okay, so I, that's just a rumor, I'm not substantiating it, but if that's the case, if Hassan, if Hassan was having health issues and he felt it was related to something his coach was advising him to do, I don't know if that's the case. I'm just speculating. Yeah, I could see why you would leave a coach under those circumstances, but I don't know if that's true. Could be, could be, but who knows. Uh, let's see, Justin Bass, but thank you for that info, uh, M12. Justin Bass, Hassan needs to ask Hani or Milo to help get him in shape. It's, so when you guys say people should ask Hani, Hani doesn't work with just anyone and he doesn't want to work with more than a few people at a time. Hani is very, very busy man. He runs Evogen Supplement Company. Coaching is a side, it's his pet, it's his passion. It's his pet project on the side. He's amazing at it. He's the best coach. He's got 22 Olympia wins to his credit with clients. But he doesn't have time to coach everybody. He doesn't want to coach everybody. So Milos will work with a lot more people. Milos works with a lot of people. But Hani, no. Hani, I'm not saying Hani wouldn't work with him. But Hani is very, very careful with his time. He doesn't have much time. To, to devote to coaching. He's got so much, so many other things going on. So I, I just say that because a lot of times people say he should work with Hani. It's like, well, Hani probably won't work with him. He won't work with most people. It's not like he doesn't like them or anything. It's, you know, he wants to work with the very, very best. And, uh, you know, someone he has like a connection with that they have a good working relationship. Like he gets along really well with, with Hadi and with uh, Derek and Phil was a good friend of his, Phil Heath. Uh, Sonny says, you know, DJ leader, Kimmy Lee, who do you have placing? Um, so it looked to me just on what I was seeing in the pictures on Bodybuilders Without Borders and also Hassan Mustafa, I think it's underscore 92. Hassan on his Instagram had, you know, home video, uh, camera video, iPhone video of the first call out. So top two is Hassan Mustafa and Stand Alone Ghost Animal. Um, the placements, it looked to me like Third and fourth, I'm not sure the order, is going to be Prince Boabang and Nate Spear. And then rounding out the top six, there's only six guys, would be a couple big Canadian dudes, Aaron, Aaron Gowley and Morgan McDonald. Brian Nassau, the lighting actually looks pretty good there. Yeah, yeah, Vancouver's actually, Vancouver's had good lighting. Uh, they've, they're known for it. If you remember, the show that really put... Hadi Chupan on the map as far as being a real threat where people are like, wow, this guy is real. We got to watch out for this guy was when he won the 2019 Vancouver Pro. And some people still say, oh, that's the best Hadi ever looked. I doubt it was the best he ever looked, but the lighting was spectacular. And what else? They had a plain black backdrop. Very few shows will do that. Most of them have the big LED screens or they have, you know, a huge banner, a huge banners across the stage with the sponsor logos and all that. That Vancouver Pro in 2019, the Hadi Chupan one, plain back background and the lighting, you know, from the side, from overhead, just perfectly sculpted lighting that really accentuated his conditioning and made it look freaky, even freakier than it really, yeah, it, it just, it was perfect. So yeah, Vancouver, Michelle Crack, the promoter, props to her. 
uh, whoever's doing her lighting for her, uh, she directs herself, whoever's doing the lighting for that show, Vancouver Pro, thumbs up. Great job. M12 Kamala Garney last update is fantastic. I think he'll win the Master Olympia easy. I don't know about easy. I'm not saying he won't win. I mean, he's a heavy favorite. He's a 212 Olympia champion. Uh, Kamala is a, is a uh, he's just a veteran. He's a he's just so polished. Great poser, great conditioning, great muscle separation, muscle maturity. Um, not the widest guy. He's not very tall, and neither am I. He's not very wide. And you got someone like a Phil Clayhart or a Josh Lenardowitz who are like six foot next to him and they're this wide. I think he can beat Josh. Um, I don't know if he can beat Phil. I don't know. Phil looks, Phil's been improving and Phil's 49 years old. You know, Kamal's 52 now. I think he's a year younger than me. I'm 53. I think Kamal's 52. So Kamal's doing a hell of a job. He's looking at the best he's ever looked in his career and he's over 50. Not many people can say it. Dexter was over 50 competing, but that wasn't Dexter over 50 wasn't the best Dexter. He his prime was probably like age 40 to 45, I would say. Uh, let's see. Just be honest, okay. Not about honey. Yeah, just I mean, like I said, you know, you wouldn't. How would you know? I mean, I know honey. I we wrote we did his column for MD together for 12 years, I think it was. So I was on the phone with him for a couple hours every month, and you know, we both went to UCSB. I'm California. We had that in common. Like good, so we both have a similar sense of humor. I get along really well. I like Hani a lot. Uh, let's see. I did not know that about it. Justin Bass in Olympia. You think Creaser will place ahead of Ian? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> I hope it's going to go viral now. I, I think Creaser is just coming to his own. Creaser, he needed to improve his back, and he did. He did it in a very short time. You know, when we saw him last year, that back, his back shots were. I'd say cringy, but they were they were a liability. He was not when he turned around. He didn't look like the same guy. He looked much more impressive and larger from the front, Crizo Michael Kruzanik, than he did from the back. And he's really in just a short amount. The Olympia was last December. We're only in July, and he just competed a month ago. He didn't have much time, but he really he improved that back. Uh, Ian's no joke. Ian's a very good competitor too, but Crizo's just got something extra. The crazy arm, the crazy mass, and the round, full sh muscles. Uh, I'm a big Frizo fan. I think he's, uh, I think he's going to do much, much better at the Olympia this year than he did last year. I mean, that should go without saying. Ding Tui, Ding Tui, Ronnie. I have two predictions. Frizo top five this year at the O. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And good Vito, a future Mister O winner. We'll see. Uh, and then Justin Bass said, "Good Vito didn't look like his IG photos at all. I think he edits them heavily." Uh, I don't know. Well. The fact that he jumped off stage and it looked to me like his knee was like buckled under him. He's like 300 pounds. Don't jump off a stage. And he's, he needs to get that hernia addressed. He's got like a little belly, uh, his belly button. It's, it's an umbilical hernia. It's very, very, you can't ignore it. It's, it's there. It's popping out of his belly button like, a, like an acorn. So he needs to get that fixed. Dennis Wolf had that. He got it fixed. Same exact, same exact hernia, umbilical. Uh, M12. Why only six people? Yeah, that's a good question. Six open pro bodybuilder participants show. Why didn't Sergio do it? it was a smart move. Yeah, Sergio should have done more, should have kept going. I don't know why he pulled the plug after that one show. Um, he should have kept going. He just needed, you know, the, the, the whole issue with Sergio at that show <coughs> was the Cali Pro, right? Was that he had flown from Dubai last minute. He was holding it. I, this is my what I think happened. I haven't talked to him. He, he won't interview. But um, he was holding a ton of water, I believe, from that long ass flight. They had to pull water from him quickly, and he, he looked. He was flat as a freaking pancake at that show. That was not the Sergio that we know and love. It was like that, like someone let the air out of his tires or something. It was. A, that was not the best Sergio. Uh, so he should have kept going because that wasn't a. His placing at that show was not an indication of what he's capable of. He's better than that. And he should have kept going and done more shows. Instead, he went, it looked like he went off the diet and back into like an off-season mode, which I don't get it because he's, you know, not that he's an old guy. He's not, but time, time waits for no man. And you don't have a huge window of time as a pro bodybuilder. He's already been a pro since 2015. Um, you know, he's missed... 
He's missed shows. He's missed seasons. Sergio needs to get back up there. He needs to, if he's going to make it happen, he needs to make it happen now because these other guys are passing him by. And, you know, he's, he's a damn good bodybuilder. He just needs to compete more. Easy for me to say, right? Uh, why didn't Sergio do it? DJ Leader, thanks for the update, brother. Catch up later. Yeah. Goat Fitness, yo. Do you think, do you guys think Hassan is at his all time best? I, you know, I'd like to see comparison shots uh, from this show today versus uh, his Orlando win last year or his Puerto Rico Pro win last year. He was, I think he's bigger now. And I think Chad at this show finally got that balance of the fullness and condition, um, which takes a couple shows usually. It's, it's very rare that a coach and a client nail it perfectly on their first prep together. But that's why it's good to do a few shows in a row. You try this, Maybe this works, this thing we tried worked, this didn't, so let's not do that next time. You make adjustments, and if you do like three or four shows within a you know a month or two, theoretically, you'll figure out the peaking, and you'll figure out this works, this is what we'll do this, we'll do that, and this is gonna give us the look we want. Uh, so yeah, go fitness, I think it sounds up to all time best. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd be curious to know. It, I think he's his all time best because he was in great condition last year, but he was a little smaller, a little flatter, which it's it's someone with that much size and so much round full muscle. It's not that big a deal. It's like he can actually he can actually spare some muscle. He can lose a little bit of size and fullness, give it up for the conditioning, sacrifice it, and it's not a bad trade-off for him because he still has plenty. He's still gonna be bigger than everybody anyway. Like Rami. Rami's always gonna be bigger than everybody. But yeah, I'm curious. I'd like to see those comparison pictures. Justin Bassey, Olympia. Already make, Justin's already making Olympia predictions. He's got Derek Lunsford one. Yeah, I mean, Derek's getting better and better, man. I would not be one bit surprised if Derek Lunsford wins the Olympia this year. Oh, and congratulations, Derek. He's, uh, his wife is pregnant now. He's going to be, be a dad. Congratulations. Uh, Derek, Samson Dowda, second place. Third, Hottie. Four, Nick. Five, Labrada. Wow, where's Andrew Jack in your predictions? Andrew Jack fans are going to have a field day with you now. How dare you? M12, I don't think Hassan is even close to his best. His last year package is much better. It was more streamlined, and maybe that is a better look for him because he does have issues controlling his midsection. He does. Uh, you saw it in Toronto especially. He, he was more aware and cognizant of it in Orlando, and he was doing a better job of trying to keep his, his midsection sucked in, breathing higher, not breathing out through the belly. But he doesn't have a tight, small midsection. He doesn't have a narrow waist. He's got more of a straight up and down torso structure, not really a natural V. So coming in streamlined, sm a little smaller. I think he was only like 235 last year. I bet you he's over 250 now, maybe even more. That might be the look, that might be the best look for him to come in lighter. And it, maybe that does take some of that waist down, take his waist down and, and give his give his shape and make his shape a little bit better, maybe. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't argue that. I think that might be the case. But you know, he's working with Chad. Chad Chad works likes to work with big, huge guys and bring them in big, huge, and shredded. I mean, Ronnie Coleman and Big Rami are the two prime examples. He's got 10 Olympia title wins between just those two clients. Obviously, Ronnie had eight of those wins. Mr. Mark, 66. I would be surprised if Brandon and Rami end up 7 to 10. The new era is here. I don't know if Rami's going to drop that low or Brandon, but it wouldn't surprise me either. Any sport, you know, especially even bodybuilding, you're always going to have, you know, the old guards eventually got to fade away and walk off in the sunset. And the new guys, they come on the scene and they that they take over. That's, that's any sport, the young... The young, fresh talent is eventually going to push out the older, established talent as they age out of the sport. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. Justin Bass, what are your thoughts on Justin Shear? Any idea why he left Hostile? I have no comment on the Hostile situation. I didn't follow any of that. I really don't. The, the, the industry gossip with, like, who's signing with who and all that doesn't really concern me that much. I, mean, it's, I don't find it that interesting, honestly. But I think he looks phenomenal. I've been looking at his updates uh, he's doing Chicago, right? Is he doing Chicago or Tampa? I think he's doing Chicago. Should do both. Uh, he's looking phenomenal. He reminds me of like a, if you remember Justin Compton, 
Reminds me in some ways of Dennis Wolf. Justin's got beautiful, beautiful shape, tons of mass, and he's getting in great condition. So I, Justin's probably going to be someone we're going to be talking a lot more about very, very soon. I think he's going to he's going to pick up a win uh, pretty soon at one of these shows. He's going to go to the Olympia, and I think people are going to be talking a lot more about Justin Sherr. I think he's damn good. Bill to laugh, agree, Mark. Someone like Ian, in my opinion, would be out of the top 15. Yeah. M12, don't count Brandon out if your nail's condition will be dangerous. Yeah, don't, don't forget, Brandon was Mr. Olympia. <laughs> he won the Olympia. Um, so, he's he's no slouch. You know, people say, oh, he's got no legs. He's... Someone said, you know, a Hassan fan made a comment I saw after Phil Clayhar won the Orlando. Phil Clayhar's got no legs. I'm like, come on, no legs, really? Compared to Hassan, Hassan's got like those Rami legs. It's just crazy giant 50s pound sacks of meat hanging off the kneecap he's got huge billowing quads so yeah compared to that his legs are weak but they're not weak at all guys don't get it twisted uh bill to laugh yeah brandon will still be top 10 oh top 10 for sure and where was he i, I try to keep my olympia list handy my okay it's a little messy here so you gotta you gotta bear with me oh, where's my olympia list okay so last olympia brandon was still fourth place He's still fourth place, top four in the world. He got beat by Hadi, Derek, and Nick Walker. He still beat Rami, Samson, Hunter, Andrew Jack, Bonac, Raphael, Ian, Crizo. So, yeah, don't don't count Brandon. I wouldn't count Brandon out. Uh, Bill Tlaff, Brandon, still be top ten. Justin Bastin, good veto is very overrated. I don't know. I, when I've seen him in contest uh, videos and pictures, I'm very, very impressed. Um, I think he's got phenomenal size, shape. Uh, I just, I'm just concerned about what happened last weekend at the guest posing in Brazil. With the hernia, that has to be addressed. That's very distracting. And I don't know what happened with his knee. I don't know if he tore something in a ligament or a tendon in his kneecap, in his knee. If so, that's that's not good when he's, he's like eight weeks out of a show. You don't want to be, you don't want uh, even knee pain that far because you're still doing all the cardio and leg training. No. M12, he was fourth and he was in his worst condition ever. Yeah, Brandon is, ne I've never seen Brandon Curry in the condition I want to see him in. I'd love to see that guy peeled inside out, dried out, grainy. I've never seen that. Uh, it's always kind of a, if, I don't want to say soft because that makes it sound like he's out of shape. He's not out of shape, but he just, he doesn't have that really extra extreme degree of clearness and hardness, the clear separation, deep, deep, cuts clear you know what i mean i haven't seen him in that condition ever yet and i think i think that would put him over the air i don't know how much better he would do i mean he still only got beat by three guys in the world brandon versus andrew jacked mm. i mean andrew's getting better i don't think brandon's getting better so i'm curious to see how andrew looks and i i, I heard he's doing tampa Samson, one, two, three, two, one. The doctor said that Vito sprained his knee. Sprained. Hmm. He's still in the gym working the one good leg and the rest of his body. Yeah, I mean, that's good. That it's, a, it's a minor injury, but you, you still don't want any injuries going as you're prepping for a show. He's just a, I think it was seven or eight weeks. You don't want to be injured close to a show. It's, it just makes everything so much more difficult. M12, do you think it's a smart move for good Vito? Still prepping to compete rather than fixing his hernia. Uh, if I were him, I would ask a judge like Tyler Manny. I would ask, I would ask, you know, Tyler, be, be blunt with me here. Be honest. Is this going to be a problem for me? Would you, or do you think any other judge, head judge, do you think the judge would, would mark me down based on this? Is it that distracting? I would have wanted to know the judge's perspective, their opinion, how much it bothers them. Cause if it really bothers them, then I'd be like, okay. If a judge said, yeah, it's 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 ugly, it's distracting, you can't help but be drawn to keep looking at that thing sticking out of your belly button. If I heard that from a judge, I'd be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get it fixed. I'll see you guys next year. But I don't know if he did that. That's what I think, and that's what I would do in his in his situation, but that's just me. Adrian Elaine, I'm from Barbados. Uh, Brandon has one of the best physiques ever. Yeah, all he needs to bring conditioning is a winner. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Brandon's just, Brandon Curry, um, he won Olympia and it still wasn't 
what I consider 100% perfect condition, more like 90. I've never, if I, I'd love to see him in that condition. I would love it. Samson again, the problem with fixing a hernia now is it would put him out of all shows probably the rest of the year. Yeah, probably best to get addressed during the off season. I, I agree, but if it's going to be an issue in the competition, why still go through all the prep and all that only to possibly get scored down because of that hernia? And it could happen because judging's tough. These guys, when you have these guys who are all so good, you have to be nitpicky. You have to find this sometimes what seem like the most trivial flaws because otherwise, how do you say this guy's better than that guy? This guy deserves to be second and this guy deserves to be third, fourth, fifth. You have to be really nitpicky and detail oriented and look for who's got the best overall package or obviously, but you have to look for flaws too. Say this guy, maybe his back is weak or his hamstrings are weak or he's got a, a little bit of a bubble gut or, you know, you have to find flaws because you have to have reasons for why you score people here versus there. Uh, built to laugh, Justin Andrew will surpass, Andrew will surpass all these dudes that beat him at the Olympia, like Hunter, Brandon, Rami, etc., which in my opinion, shouldn't have beaten the dude. Yeah, I mean, Andrew's damn good and he's getting better. Crohn's lifter, my man, what's up? Yeah, thanks for the, uh, Crohn's lifter, thanks by the way for the, the uh, positive comments on my son's posts, because, uh, Crohn's Lifter has a page called Crohn's Lifter on Instagram. He's a bodybuilder. He's a really good bodybuilder living with Crohn's disease. My son, Christian, 23 years old, he's living with ulcerative colitis, which is related. They're all like uh, IBS. They're all related. Uh, they're all a pain in the ass. Uh, when they have flare-ups, it's it's brutal. You know, my son, sometimes he's in the bathroom for like hour, you know, hours out of the day. It hasn't been lately. He's on meds. To control it, but um, geez, what was I didn't even get to your question. I'm sorry. So, Crohn's left to where does Presty land if he would have done this show instead? Hmm, Presty, the way he looked last weekend in Portugal, I don't know. I don't know if he would beat, he's got a better structure than Hassan. He's a big dude. I don't know. I don't know. Hassan's got that wow factor, the, the big, round, cartoonish muscles. I, I'm a big fan of uh. A Presti, Andrea Presti. I think he looks phenomenal. That shoulder to waist ratio, you know, the chest. The shoulder, he's just a massive, rugged dude with really good structure and shape, and he gets in excellent condition. Coached by Mauro Sassi, Team Stone. So I don't know what would happen. I think Hassan is worse from the last two show, shows. Is Abdul Abdul Wow, everyone else says he looks better. Justin Bass, prayers for your sons. I'm sorry to hear that. He's lucky to have a great dad like you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I always. I always try to put things in perspective. It could have been a lot worse. If I wish he would be perfectly healthy, obviously, but if that's the worst health problem he's got and it can be controlled with medication and diet uh, and, you know, trying to trying to keep his stress levels down, we're fortunate because there's a lot worse things that could befall a person. There's a lot worse illnesses and conditions. So if ultra colitis is the worst thing that ever happens to him, you know, I consider that a blessing, honestly. Because, you know, anyway. M12, I prefer Andrew Jack Texas Pro Package better than his Arnold Package. Hmm. He was conditioned at the Arnold, but he looked a little flat and small compared to Texas Pro. Yeah, more so, um, it was the first night of the Arnold. I thought he was a little fuller. I think he came in a little flatter the next night. Or was it the other way around? I don't know. But he was. he definitely was fuller at the Texas show. Um, but I think they went for the extra bit of condition because people knocked... I was one of them. People knocked his condition in Texas, <coughs> saying he wasn't 100% dialed in, and he wasn't. We hate we hate throwing. Some people get really mad when I throw these numbers, but he was like 85% of where he should have been condition wise in Texas. He's probably like 90 at the Arnold. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up because we're gonna be back tomorrow night. The finals are tomorrow night. The website is Van. V-A-N, vanproshow.com, vanproshow.com. Their Instagram is vanproshow. If you want to pick up the pay-per-view for tomorrow night's finals, you can do it there. Uh, there's also all kinds of information on the show. They also had a pro qualifier with that. So that's it, guys. So appreciate you watching. If Rami plays in the top five, I think he should peacefully retire and enjoy his life. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that one. So, yeah, tomorrow night, guys, we're coming back for the finals. 
uh, I can't recall the time because the times kept shifting. The times are listed on there, but I will see you guys. If you have your notifications set, you'll know when we're going live and I do all these lives. So appreciate you guys joining me, participating. That's why we go live. I like to interact and get your feedback because you're the fans, man. It's, there would be no sport of bodybuilding without you guys. You, you make it. So thanks for watching. If you like this, hit the like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Put your notifications on, on YouTube and on your iPhone or Android or what's the other one? Galaxy? I don't know. Google phone. Whatever you have. And that's it, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Vancouver Pro Judging. Hassan Mustafa in the lead right now. Looking like third time is going to be a charm after two runner-up placings. Looks like he is going to pick up a win and his Mr. Olympia qualification tomorrow night in Vancouver at the Vancouver Pro. So join us then, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.